Hi, uh, nice to see a big crowd. Uh, good to see, uh, see a good gathering here today. Uh, so, to, uh, I'll be mainly uh, focusing on uh, the uh, agile uh, practices that we follow. So, I'll not main, uh, focus on any particular methodology as such. I'm not going to focus on, say, Scrum, or I'm not going to focus on Kanban, or any of those uh, methodologies as such, but I'll mainly focus on the values and principles that uh, we uh, abide by, and uh, how these uh, values and principles have let us be uh, an agile company. So that's mainly uh, what I'm going to focus on. So for those of you who do not know uh, our company, so we are a Midivya integration company, and uh, we are the largest uh, uh, open source company in the world as of now. Um, and now we are the seventh largest uh, open source, uh, uh, actually we are the seventh largest open source uh, uh, company uh, in the world, but the largest integration open source company in the world. So as of now we have 500 plus uh, team members uh, across uh, the globe. And uh, the main thing I want to focus on is, is we are based on agile uh, principles. So. So we, we wouldn't say that we uh, uh, you know follow Scrum or we would uh, we, we wouldn't say we are following Kanban or any of those things. So we we definitely follow the agile principles and the uh, Apache way. So uh, <coughs> have most of you guys actually seen the agile manifesto that was uh, set up in 2001? Show of hands uh, for the not too many, but that's fine. So the Agile Manifesto is actually up there in the internet, so you can go and see it. So there are four principles and 12, uh, actually four values and four, uh, 12 uh, principles. So we are governed by these four values. So we value our individuals and, and interactions more than the processes and the tools that we have. So co uh, collaborating with the customer is very much more important for us than having a you know, a contract negotiation with the customer and going into a lot of details with the customer there. So, responsibility change is really important for us. And working software, I mean, this is the, like the main thing that we focus on. So, working software is way more important than having heaps and heaps of docu documentation. So, it really doesn't make sense. So, we'll go into each of these things in uh, a little bit of detail. So, individuals and interactions. All right. So, it's all about people. As far as we are concerned, it's all about our team. So the first point is respect. So as far as we are concerned, respect is something that you need to earn. So uh, if you're like a VP or if you're a director or if you're uh, even the CEO, it really doesn't make sense for us. Your title really doesn't matter. As far as we are concerned, your respect has to be earned. So we would respect your brand as a person rather than you know respecting your title. So that's one thing that we uh, promote right from day one, so that we have that kind of interaction across people, so that we don't have this kind of large, you know, uh, uh, kind of a barrier between, like a, like a kind of a structure between the, you know, engineers and the directors and that kind of stuff. So we want to kind of break that away. So open communication is really important for us. So nothing is hidden. Uh, our strategies, our architecture discussions, our engineering, dis uh, engineering discussions are all open. Uh, so the email discussions are all open. Anyone can subscribe to it. Um, uh, even the meetings are actually uh, done in an open fashion. If you want to go for a meeting, you can attend any meeting you want. Even that's, that's open as well. Again, that's for, to make sure that we have enough communication between our teams. So another important thing is we are driven by trust. So we don't believe in micromanagement. So for the project managers out there, so we don't have project management as such in our company as well. So um, again, so we don't believe in micromanagement. So we believe in self-management and self-leadership and self-governance. So <clears throat> also we tell all our folks to challenge something that you don't believe in. So even if you are given a particular task, if you are if you are not comfortable with that task, you should challenge it. Don't just blindly follow something. So this is to build trust between you and your lead as well. So we ask everyone to challenge them. If you don't like it, if you, if you think there's a different way of doing it, go for it. Uh, and don't fear to fail. So again, so take ownership of what you do and, and don't ask for permission. That's another thing. So we don't, we don't tell people, okay, 
uh, go ask your lead before you get uh, before you start something. That's that's not the way we uh, approach things. So basically, you say if you think this is the right thing to do, this is the right implementation to follow, this is the right design to follow. Go ahead and do it, and don't ask for permission, and don't fear to fail. The failing is fine. I mean, that's uh, failing is also part of learning. That's 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 how we see. So again, this is to build trust and communication across our teams. <clears throat> and finally, of course, one thing we really uh, you know promote a lot is is be passionate passionate about what you're doing. So if you don't have that passion, then you know you wouldn't you wouldn't give your hundred percent. You wouldn't be uh, agile to the extent of, you know, moving from one task to the other. Also, if you don't have that kind of passion, and if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, uh, then it's it's not going to work out as well. So another uh, key important aspect that we drive uh, in our teams is actually passion as well. So these are some of our core cultural values. So if you take our team dynamics, again, we make our teams very small. So. Uh, we have four products, and 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 we have uh, then also we have two other. We have another platform called Ballerina that's coming out as well. So some of you guys may have heard of it. So and another uh, solution called Open Banking. So apart from that, so th these these teams are pretty huge. But if you take your immediate team, we actually have sub teams which have only five to seven team members. So again, this is to you know leverage interactions between. Uh, between team members, so we, our teams are pretty small. <clears throat> and another important thing is we play a cross-functional role. So uh, we wouldn't want, uh, we don't have, lay, uh, we don't have a, a, a set of people doing design. We don't have another set of people doing architecture. We don't have a, another set of people doing in, uh, implementation. Another, another set of uh, guys doing documentation and even the marketing material. So if you start. A feature we are su you are supposed to actually implement the entire feature end to end. That's that's another thing that we emphasize as well. So you have to play a cross-functional role. So we don't have separate QA engineers as well. So you have to do your QA as well. So why we do this is to make sure that people take complete ownership of a task that you you know take on. So because what happens in many companies and in in, in some other companies that I've worked on is that. Uh, so you will do the development well, and everything is going well. But but uh, if it starts crashing, you will put the blame on someone else, saying, you know, I did my implementation well, but the QA was not done. So this, uh, you know, this particular bug was missed. So to avoid that kind of uh, uh, problem, also we make sure that uh, all our teams are cross-functional, and also team members can periodically kind of decide what team they need to work with. So this doesn't happen too often because people are comfortable with the team they work with, but on and off, they are given the chance of actually moving on to different teams as well. And these are all self-forming teams. So your role is kind of something that evolves with uh, with uh, with the way you perform in your team. So we don't, uh, you know, we don't, we wouldn't give you a title. So you're a QA engineer here. You're uh, at this point, you're a uh, person who's doing the documentation. This is at this point, you're the person who is doing unit testing. We don't give a, that kind of a uh, you know, designation as such, we would actually it becomes a self-forming team and it keeps evolving. So those are our main uh, team dynamics. Okay. All right. All right. So of course we trust everyone. I mean that's basically how we work. So we always emphasize and tell people, you know, it's important that you don't break trust and make sure that uh, you live by it. But we also Verify, so we should we trust, but we also verify to make sure that things are going the right way. So, for that we have actionable and very simple tools. So, meaning, at some point we we were actually coming up with some tools which are rather complicated with ha having a lot of pie charts and you know graphs and so on. But then again, nobody was actually using it. So, a lot of us in many companies have have all sorts of tools to do uh, to measure metric and so on but then again these things are never used and never understood so what we realized was it has to be an actionable tool where all the team members kind of participate in in developing that tool as well where they give feedback so when we even come up with a metric we would tell we will publish that metric across the uh, across the company and ask them can you please give us feedback i mean is this metric does it make sense do you understand it so do you want to improve it so and we do get feedback, and it's a, it's a collective metric that we use to verify 
uh, what we do as well to make sure that the, uh, the, the fo folks are uh, you know, uh, going the right way. <clears throat> so also we try to gamify our metric as much as possible. So this is something we are still working on. It's, it's, a, it's more of a, on a kind of a, a starting kind of stage, but we want to gamify it because all of us are software engineers. So we want to actually, uh, that whole concept of achieving something is, is something that drives us and motivates us. So we always try to gamify our uh, tools as well. Okay, so when you come to the next value is the customer collaboration. So, so we are actually in a, in a bit of a privilege, uh, I would say privilege uh, position because our customers are also software developers. So basically we are a middleware company. So if you are one of our customers, you would be actually using our middleware components to implement your software solution as well. So in that manner, we kind of feel the customer's pain as well because we use a lot of middleware components, as, uh, mil, uh, open source middleware components as well. So because of that, now if I am using a particular component and if that has a bug, I really feel the pain because I had to, you know, raise a uh, uh, maybe a GitHub issue and wait till that issue is fixed. So just like that, if there's a bug in our com our components, our customers will see, feel the same pain. So we we inculcate that in our team members as well. Look. You're, you're, going to, you're feeling the same pain because you're waiting for somebody else's fix. Just like that, somebody else is also waiting for your fix as well. So apart from that, we also want our customers to be part of our team. Again, we are a little more privileged because our customers are developers as well. So we want our customers to contribute to us. So we, we have our code in GitHub. Uh, it's all open source. Uh, it's, you, know, you can download and do any modification that you want. Uh, and so we want our customers to contribute, participate, uh, raise issues if there are bugs in it, raise issues and so on. So we don't look at the customer as an external party. We try to inculcate them into our process as well. We want feedback from them in terms of the features that that they are going to that they would like to see in our next release. So so we'll see in a different uh, slide where we provide release. Uh, we have a release train where uh, we provide releases every week, and we want to get feedback from a customer as, uh, from the customers as fast as possible so so that they become part of the process so again for us to be agile we need to get our solutions out there get our features out there as fast as possible so <coughs> yeah, so customers are actually part of our process and uh, they will actually contribute to the direction of our product as well so if you move on so responding to change Okay. So, <clears throat> as far as change is concerned, we we tell our people to actually focus on the on the direction of the product, not a particular plan. So, if I'm going to start a particular feature, I would actually do a quick estimate and give a work breakdown structure, saying this is how long I'm going to take, these are the t uh, work items that I need to do, and so on. But then again, we are not going to spend heaps and heaps and of time doing that estimate. So we and all planning, uh, you know, heaps and heaps of time on planning it because if that particular plan is not going to work, we would encourage a person to move on and you know do something else, go with plan B. So, <clears throat> so that's why we tell them to actually focus on the long-term mission of your product and not the plan, because uh, if you do work focus on the plan, and you if if you're focusing on the plan, you wouldn't want to change the plan even if it's working. So if you're following agile principles, that's, that's not going to work. So our delivery cycles are uh, pretty short. So it's about two weeks generally. And we, as I said, we have a release train. So every week we do a release. So we, we sort of uh, follow a Kanban approach where we have a backlog of uh, work items that we have. And we, when, a, when a developer is free, he or she would take the, the work item out and do the development. and we. We have a sort of a Kanban uh, graphs that we maintain as well, and we keep on releasing every week. So the customer gets the features every week. So the, our delivery cycles are pretty short. <coughs> yeah, again, if, as I said, uh, if the plan is not working, just rework the plan. So we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't, uh, you know, harp on the plan and say I'm going to follow this plan no matter what. That really doesn't make sense. And and we also inculcate the fact with our engineers that throwing away code is really okay. I mean, that's also another learning curve. So 
you need to be passionate about the fact that you developed a feature, understood a feature, did a design, but and also be passionate about developing quality code. But well, if it's not, if uh, maybe maybe the design approach that we identified initially was wrong. But so because of that, throwing away that is fine. So you need to inculcate that as well in uh, in our engineers because if if you get passionate about something and and, and try to harp on the fact that this is my code, uh, so let's not throw that away. Let's just keep on, you know, going going with that, even though that's not the proper design. If that kind of mindset is there with the team members, that's not going to help you to be agile as well. <clears throat> and as I said, don't go overboard with estimates. So there are some companies that I worked with where we did three-point estimate, where we did function point estimates. And I, uh, it really didn't make much sense. Like, because even to do the function point estimate, I mean, it was so complicated. Doing the estimate itself was another. We, we actually used to estimate the fact that this is going to take you know, so many hours to do the estimate. So uh, the estimation part was part of the estimate as well. It was that bad. So let's not waste a lot of time. <laughs> I'm sure Subuki probably <laughs> has a lot of experience over this, because we probably. <laughs> anyway. So that's the thing. So don't go over with the estimates. That's, that's another thing that we emphasize on. Um, yeah, so finally, it's the working software that matters. Don't have heaps and heaps of documents, because that's not going to help as well. So you might have a flowery document where the design is uh, nicely documented, but then again, nobody is using it. I had, uh, I had a particular experience where we uh, spent two months documenting use cases. But when it came to implementing that, we actually never even opened that document. That was a complete waste of time. So again, do your design. It's really important to get the design right. Spend time on that. But don't spend a lot of time documenting it. Taking a, you know, a whiteboard picture is perfectly fine. And keeping that as part of your documentation is perfectly fine. So don't waste a lot of time in flowering the document because you know, that, that is not going to add a lot of value at some point. But spend time on design. That's basically what we tell our guys as well. <coughs> yeah, as I said, picture from a, uh, a whiteboard is perfectly fine. So your source code is your main document. That's the main thing that you need to focus on, right? So write quality code. And when a person reads your code, he or she needs to be able to understand this is what the system is doing. He or she, does, she doesn't need to actually go and refer the design document to figure out what it does. If that's the case, your code is not good. So that's another thing that we actually emphasize as well. So also use simple tools. As I said, I mean, don't spend a lot of time and have heaps and heaps of documents that you never, you are never going to use. So working software is more important than documents. All right. Okay. All right. So, one thing about uh, agility is that you get to this uh, trend of uh, you know trend of actually uh, postponing fixing the defects. So that is that is a bit of a uh, problem that you might have because you know your your because you are agile. You have your releases happening frequently. You're like, okay, I do have those defects, but let me just push that away a little bit further where we can do that in a different release. So that is something that is, is something that you should avoid. Because uh, invariably, your debt will increase. And it will create a lot of frustration. It will create a lot of frustration for your customers. It will create a lot of frustration internally. So uh, working on, on, on defects is, is really important. And, and, and you must emphasize to your engineers that quality is important right from day one. So even if you open your source code, and, and um, I mean, if you, when you do a code review, most of the time you might see, like even the license header, some guys don't have it. But you know, the, but when you ask them, okay, so, so why didn't you put the license header? Or they'll be like, okay, no, but I, I'm going to come back and do it. So, but that doesn't make sense. So, if you are writing code, do it right from day one. That's another thing that we inculcate. Even the license header, simple thing, copy pasting it, but do it from day one. So that's. That's uh, something that we focus on as well. So if if uh, if not, if you don't have quality code, it will actually you know the code becomes unmanageable and generates a lot of frustration. And what we also emphasize is if it's becoming unmanageable, if we are having a lot of defects, we stop everything else and just fix the defects. We'll have a couple of cycles just doing defect fixing only. 
So that is also to make sure that we don't have technical uh, debt piling up. So with all these uh, small teams working and a lot of uh, siloed components developing, so another problem we will come across is with integration itself. So <clears throat> as far as integration is concerned, again with the open communication and uh, the, the open culture that we have, we want our, uh, especially our team leads and uh, all our engineers to communicate with each other as much as possible. Don't wait for, don't for, wait for a formal meeting, don't wait for you know, some form of uh, special discussion to happen to talk about dependencies. So dependencies is, is something that you need to talk about even at lunch time. So if, when you meet at lunch, you will meet so many other team members from different teams who are doing di different components. Go speak to them, ask them, you know, I'm doing this interface, how are you actually exposing that uh, particular method? So go speak to them, you know, have as, in, as many interactions as possible to resolve your dependency issues. So that's another way we make sure that we, we uh, you know, conform to agility. So, of course, we have an organization-wide uh, architects meeting uh, uh, once in two weeks, just to make sure that we, you know, we don't um, lose out on anything. And <coughs> again, with the communication policy, as I said, all our design discussions are open, architecture discussions are open. Uh, all team members are supposed to know the dependencies of other components. So it's, it's not something, it's never going to be a surprise. If it's a surprise, then we have a serious problem. So if you don't know the dependencies of other components, then of course the agility is not going to work because at the time of integration, there's going to, you know, it's going to get messed up. And also, uh, we have this, you know, support rotation cycle and so on. Because of that, uh, mo most of the team members would even know the, 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 the code base of other team members as well. So because of that, you can even contribute to other code bases and uh, if people are falling behind, you can actually even contribute to other code bases and get it done. So again, integration is something that we need to actually uh, talk about and uh, resolve upfront without uh, it becoming, bec uh, becoming a mess. So again, so <coughs> again, so, uh, in terms of integration, so we have continuous integration in place. So, uh, of course, most of software companies, most software companies would definitely have this in place. And we are moving from a, a, uh, like a monolithic architecture to microservices-based architecture. I'm sure so we will touch upon these things more. So, also we, we emphasize the fact that if there's a failure in one component, so when you're doing your design, you have to actually make sure that your errors are self-contained. So, make sure that uh, failure in one component doesn't create a you know, catastrophic uh, failure in something else. So as we discussed before, so solving integration issues uh, upfront is really important so that it doesn't become a, a serious is, a problem at a later point. And the release process is another thing that you should always be uh, careful about. Don't keep it as an afterthought. If the release process is an afterthought, there's a high chance that there would be a lot of manual processes, manual things that you need to do to get the release happening. So automate your release, make it, make, because there could be so many configuration points that you need to you know, work on and so on. So don't keep the release process as an afterthought. That's, that's, and, and try to automate your release process as much as possible. So these are some of the key points that, sorry, key points that, uh, that I wanted to emphasize. So, just to um, conclude, uh, I just want to mention that it's, it's the values and principles that's important. It's not the methodology. It's not the fact that I'm using Scrum. It's not the fact that I'm using Kanban. It's not the fact that I'm using XP. It's not the fact that I'm using pair programming. That, those things are just labels. It really doesn't make any sense. It's, so take what's right for you, but if you want to be really agile, uh, live by the agile principles and the values, and it's all there in the manifesto as well, that makes a lot of sense. It was written in 2001, makes a lot of sense now. So it's, it has made a lot of sense for us. We've been, uh, work, uh, WCO2 has been there since 2000, uh, I mean for the last 12 years, and we've been uh, established based on these uh, principles and values, and it has really worked for us. So it's not the, it's not the labels that matter. That's what we need to say. So there, there are so many companies out there, that, 
saying that we have short sprints, we have a two week sprint. So, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, we have a Kanban board, then we look at the Kanban board because of that, we are agile. So, no, that really doesn't make sense. If your mindset is not agile, if, if those values that I spoke about, if those things are not inculcated in the organization, it's not going to work, as uh, Raji was saying as well. So, just to conclude, I just want to say what Charles Darwin said. So, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Thank you. Thanks.